I can't be on top of you 24 hours a day, Michael. I can't stay on top of you 24-7. Jan is, you know, she's, she's so fun, I think, mostly because she's so complicated. She, was, uh, she has so many different layers to her personality and to her hopes and dreams and fears. And uh, so she was, to me, a very multidimensional character. And uh, I just, I loved her. I always loved her. And I really hate when people walk up to me and say, Jan's such a I'm like, clearly you weren't watching very closely. Because she's so much more than that. I mean, she has her moments for sure, but anyway, I think she's really complicated and super funny, and I loved playing her. <laughs> if I was 22 and I had lots of time to have lots of children, then sure, let's let Michael have a shot at one of them, but honestly, I need to make this one count. It was funny because it was sort of a last minute audition. I had, I had, uh, I had gotten the call and I went in. Yeah, so I did the scene and I could, you can kind of feel when you, I've been, you know, acting professionally since I was six years old. So you can feel in a room when everybody's kind of just like, goof, you know, and you feel that when everybody kind of is locked on and it's kind of gelling. And uh, so it felt really good. And then uh, the office, you know, where I was just a guest star, um, hired me. And, uh, and then I did the first six episodes as a guest star. Um, of the first season and then I think I did the first two of the second season as a guest star and then they made me a regular. You're hardly my first. That's my season! Oh my gosh, well of course the dinner party. Um, that was the best episode for Jan, of course. Super, super fun. Yep, I think we had three TV screens. So I had three chances, and did I hit it once? Yes. Did I hit it twice? I did. Did I hit it three times? Yes, I did. <laughs> and the crew guys were absolutely enamored with me after that. <laughs> so that's what I remember about the dead deep. I also loved uh, uh, cocktails it was super fun. It was the first time you heard Jan say that's what she said. Why is this so hard? That's what she said. Oh my God, what did I say? But I love that episode, and uh, and also just I loved in cocktails. It was so so funny how aggressive she was with Michael. What's, what did I come on. Just, 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 just. <laughs> I loved that. I just, I loved this idea that she was sort of pent up, all this pent up sort of sexual energy that she just was just like, ah! <laughs> you know, I just, I'm going to have you. <gasps> it was so good. Um, and there's, uh, I also loved the one that, uh, where I sang to the baby, the baby shower episode, where I, where I sang to the baby, the very inappropriate, uh, son of a preacher man. You come and tell me everything is all right. You kiss and tell me everything is all right. And can I get away again tonight? The only Michael and Dan, of course. <laughs> I mean, they'd have to be my favorite couple, being that I was part of that couple. There's something about Jan and Michael that's very charged, very, I think they had a lot of sexual chemistry, the two of them in their kind of awkwardness and their different, just their different ways of being. And then that we had that first kiss in the, in the uh, parking lot, which was just so awkward and weird and great. It was just so ridiculously awkward, my God. I actually love the, the dinner party moment when we're all sitting together and, um, you know, we've just sat down and he says something to her, uh, you know, and I, and, and, and my character says something like, yeah, I'm the devil. And I did this thing that was, I didn't plan on this, but I put my hands, like I just sort of in the moment spontaneously just went like, <laughs> you know, honey, that door was extremely clean and it looked invisible. You are so right. You are so right. Because before I lived here, the glass was always covered in smudges. Ah. And then I moved in and I cleaned it. So I guess that makes me the devil. <laughs> you are. She is. She is the devil.
they, those two together are just like, just sort of a perfect match of imperfection in all ways. So <laughs> it was fun. It was super fun. It's so exciting how people just love this show and continue to love it. And um, and because of the because of the internet, we we have you know shows that just continue on and on and on. And and also you know the office was groundbreaking. Breaking. I, I really think that the timing of the office was uh, sort of made the show. And I think that I just think that it the opportunity for humor on this show. It's just, it never really ends. I mean, that's going to go on. It's going to be funny um, forever because it just is. It's just funny. The writing is excellent. The acting is excellent. The concept is excellent. And the characters are just so likable and, you know, they're dimensional. So they're, they're, they're really, really fun. In the 60s, I made, I made love to many, 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 women, many women. Often outdoors. Often outdoors. In the mud and the rain. The rain. In the mud, and it's possible a it's man possible slipped a man in. Slipped in. It would be no, way, be no way of knowing. I've been involved in a number of cults, both as a leader and a follower. You make more money as a leader, but you have more fun as a follower. I've been involved in a number of cults, both as a leader and a follower. You have more fun as a follower, but you make more money as a leader. I would describe Creed as an enigma to himself. He is an a limbo by trying to be uh, a worker. He doesn't even know. Basically, for a couple of years at that show, I thought I was actually working at a paper company. I didn't know it was on a TV show. I thought I was getting paid pretty well. Um, but I just didn't want to rock the boat, as it were. Nobody steals from Creed Bratton and gets away with it. The last person to do this disappeared. His name? My favorite part about playing him was that um, I got to go from being the kind of a cool rock star cat to uh, this guy. <laughs> he would, uh, he'd, he'd, he'd filibrate. He, Creed uh, was like a broken tuning fork. Every time the camera would come around, I'd got to go, you know, up, up the ante. But he, he, he kept me on my toes for sure. <laughs> The funniest quality about the Creed character, I believe, is his cluelessness to uh, how scared everyone was of him. Because he was, uh, he was a frightening guy. If you, when you come into the office with blood on you, uh, you're stealing from people. Um, and then, then, he, then he found out how good he was at chess. He stole from everybody. On this. I mean, I don't even know how, I, if I was really that character, I'd be in jail, folks. That's, that's the deal. How was Creed able to keep his job? Well, that is a very good question. Uh, he knows where the bodies are buried. He knows who to uh, blackmail, who to uh, ask for a little uh, bakshish. That's Creed, that's what he does so well. It's Halloween. That is really, really good timing. I remember I was working on Bernie Mac and uh, Ken Quapis uh, came on the show, and I got friends with Ken, and I heard about him doing the the office. And I, I, I called him, and I lobbied, I lobbied, and I went and I wrote my own character. I wrote this character, and I ad libbed a bunch of stuff, and I gave it to Greg Daniels, and uh, and, it was, and a few days later they came and said, "Well, this is very funny stuff." And then I got that first shot with the Halloween episode. Um, with Steve Carell at six and a half page scene. The greatest moment was the, um, the Friday after it aired. I was at craft service and uh, Rain Wilson and, and John Krasinski came in the door and they saw me and they came over and they could both give me big bear hugs that you knocked out of the park, buddy. Well, you know, I was, I was moved. I was moved. Thanks, guys. Well, I think everybody was this way. I was so lucky to be on that show and every day I knew I was going to go in there and laugh with my friends. They're all great, but if to be specific, I guess, getting to play the manager, I right, threw the keys to nobody. It's a beautiful morning at Dunder Mifflin, as I like to call it, Great Bratton. Keep it running.
the, 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 the language. Um, Bo body, Bo body. Bo body, Bo body. What does the first B stand for? What are we doing? We're making acronyms. Okay. What does the first B stand for? Um, toward the end, to the finale, uh, a PA came to my, my 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 dressing room door and knocked on the door. He wanted me to uh, meet Greg Daniels in the office. I went in, and Greg asked me how I, he thought the character, sh my character, should leave the show. And I told him I wanted to play my song, uh, All the Faces. Now I didn't hear about it till the uh, till the table read. We're over here at Universal on a big sound stage with the Universal people and and uh, everyone, the press and stuff like that. And I'm reading the script, and it, toward the end of the script, it says Creed Bratton sings his original song, All the Faces. I saw a friend today. It had been a while. We forgot each other's names But it didn't matter cause deep inside Well, I, I almost started crying. I got so moved. It was a major, major gift to me and I, I'm so thankful to everybody to allow me to do that. Why is this show so loved 15 years later? I think in these times we need something with, with a good heart. And a, and a kindness to it. And even though it was cringeworthy comedy, it had heart and it, uh, it just touched a sweet spot. I think that truly The Office has a sweet spot for everyone or else they wouldn't keep coming back to it. I know uh, I, uh, I loved being on that show and, uh, and I, apparently everyone else loved it too. So lucky us, all of us. Where would Creed be now? Well, we know the character Creed went to jail but they wouldn't stand him there. He would con his way out. I think uh, he would get that attorney from, from the making of a murder, and he'd con her into coming into the, uh, and get him out like that, you know. And he'd, he, he'd compliment her clothes so that he could get out of jail. <laughs> the only difference between me and a homeless man is his job. I will do whatever it takes to survive, like I did when I was a homeless man. If Creed was going to say goodbye and to, his, to this whole interview and stuff like that, I would advise you to watch your back. You'll never know where I'll show up or what may happen with Creed. I seem cute and nice, but I'm dangerous. <laughs>